there's always a, a kind of attention for bands that are trying to make a living as a band. And on one hand, they want to do music that's satisfying to themselves. And on the other hand, they need an audience. Otherwise, they go broke, right? There was a period in the late 80s, 90s, when, uh, for example, working bands in England, there was this kind of a Madchester dance craze thing where basically all bands inserted this shuffle drum beat into their songs because otherwise they weren't, you know, they couldn't get an audience. It was like the, the, there was a prerequisite of a certain drum beat in the in in a, in combo music at that point. Uh, that that seemed, you know, from my perspective and from the perspective of the punk background, that just seems ridiculous. Like either either you get an audience or you don't. You know, you you should make the music that you're gonna that you want to make, and either you get an audience or you don't. If you don't get an audience, you're still making music that you find rewarding for its own sake. Um, another thing that's interesting is people who are in the profession, that is the music management business side of the profession, have a lot of advice for bands. My experience has been that this advice is typically bad advice. And I don't care whether you're talking about someone who's at the absolute apex of the profession or somebody who just is just booking the local nightclub. If someone who's not in a band starts telling the band how they should behave as a band and how they should perform their music, that person is talking bullshit, right? If he had all the good ideas, he would just make music and have all the hits himself and be a millionaire. So he's just applying his speculation and wants your band to run the experiment for him. Typically, you can, you can ignore any advice that comes from outside the band. In, in my experience, the advice that I've seen from the, the music's business side to compromise almost all has to do with changing something about the core behavior of the band, right? That is, don't quite be yourself so much. When the history and the evidence is that people respond most to music that's being made the most genuinely. That is, when the conduit b between the, the performer and the artist is the clearest, when it's being the least fiddled with, when you're getting the most direct relationship with the person on the stage, that's where the bond is strongest. That's how the audience becomes like a dependable year after year audience. So I think the evidence is that there is no advantage to compromise. If you compromise and start doing things for business reasons rather than for the reasons that you got in a band in the first place, then people listening to the music can tell they can tell that you're doing something that's not genuine. They can tell that you're doing something that is, you know, for some external, either intellectual or business reason, and they will respond negatively to it. I mean, occasionally there's a kind of a, there's a kind of an intellectual curiosity about the social experiment that a band is running or whatever, but an audience can tell if you're bullshitting. And the moment you start compromising and start doing something for the sake of an ulterior motive, then you're bullshitting.